We hear a lot these days about the push for diversity and inclusion in the workplace, but what exactly does that look like? Well, there's new research showing that more diverse, more equitable, and inclusive leadership actually helps organizations make better decisions, in fact, nearly 90% of the time. And now there's a new roadmap to achieving that. Uh, author and executive coach Patrice Gordon is just out with a new book. It's called Reverse Mentoring, Removing Barriers and Building Belonging in the Workplace. She says that everybody benefits when leaders and members of underrepresented groups come together, uh, tell stories, share information. And Patrice joins us now. Patrice, good morning. Good morning, Tony. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, the title, Reverse Mentoring, I think it's almost self-explanatory, but not quite. <laughs> yeah. So uh, tell us what reverse mentoring is. So reverse mentoring actually started with Jack Welsh and GE Capital in the 90s. He recognised that the leaders in the organisation were so far removed from what was actually happening with the internet. So the younger individuals and generations that came in, he got them to mentor the senior leaders. So they had a really good understanding of what is this thing coming and how do we use it and how do we make the most of it. Mm. So rather than older workers pairing off with younger, newer employees, yep. it's, it's the opposite. Absolute opposite. And what I have done in, in my research and, you know, since the you know, social change that's happened is really use um, the difference that we have within organisations to un make sure that leaders understand what it's like to be an underrepresented individual. So in the work that I've done and the research I've done, I've extended that age to gender, to ethnicity, to neurodiversity to um, veteran status, for example. So those yeah. underrepresented individuals within the organization, I'm really trying to make sure they have a voice. But you speak of what you know because you did this. Your boss, you, you, you ended up mentoring your boss. I did. But you say, who is this harder for? Is it harder for the mentor or the Ooh. mentee? It depends. <laughs> um, I was quite a confident mentor, so I was quite confident in my story, but I definitely think through my research and speaking to lots of leaders, the mentees definitely have a hard time, right? Mm -hmm. As a senior leader, you are expected to have all of the answers. You're expected to know the direction of the business. You're not necessarily expected to be vulnerable and necessarily courageous in the workplace. And being a reverse mentor means that you need to put yourself in that position of a novice and really listen yeah. to the underrepresented. So those in position of leadership, it's hard for them to understand how to be vulnerable. Absolutely. Because they're told not to, right. and they feel like it's a sign of weakness in front of their employees. What, what advice do you give mentors? Mentors or mentees? Mentees, mentees. as in the, the, the mentee, the senior oh, yeah, leader. The older ones. The, the, oh, senior, the older leaders. ones. Yes. The, the, yeah. the senior ones is really um, understanding why you want to get involved. So you have power. How do you want to use it within the organization? Are you willing to share your power? And if you are, you need to put yourself in that room and put yourself in that vulnerable position to be able to do that. But you have to have buy-in from the top. You know, after right. the death of George Floyd, many companies said, listen, we need to change, we need to be more diverse, we need to be more inclusive, and that seems to have petered off a, a bit. Absolutely. You say there's a difference between diverse, don't say diversity, you say, say inclusion. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Verna Meyer, she says, you know, diversity is being invited to the party, but inclusion is being asked to dance. Ah, I like that. That's and really, good. in organizations, what we're trying to do is, yeah, we can bring as many diverse people in as possible, but actually, are they going to enjoy working in the environment? Are you going to get value from them because they feel included? And that's the key that I'm trying to get to here. But you got you to make sure it's spread throughout the company. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if the leader says this is what we want to do, right. but it's not passed on to middle management. Yeah. You can have these training sessions and coaching sessions. What difference do they really make mm. if there's not buy-in from everybody? Absolutely. One of the key things I'm, I'm really um, in, invested in encouraging companies to do is making sure that we set some targets. So as with financial targets or sustainability targets, you know, everyone's really clear that we can get to net zero by 2050. Mm -hmm. But what about diversity, equity and inclusion targets? I think we need to get braver. We need to kind of put a stake in the ground and we need to hold everyone to account. And the way that we do that is through hitting them in the pocket, you know, yeah. making sure that their, their financial package is linked yeah. To diversity, equity, and inclusion goals. And another way we do that is getting the book. Getting, yeah, Gordon, thank the book. you so much. I could listen mentoring. to you all day. I love it's your accent. On sale now. I love it. <laughs>